Hi beautifuls, welcome back. We are here to dive into 2021 and the astrology and all your must knows. Now, if you haven't sub sub, if you do want to follow me and you feel this content relates to you individually, please write in the comment section how it does. I love to hear your feedback. Now, we're moving away from a very interesting 2020 and into a very unique 2021 that for a lot of us collectively hasn't happened on this planet before and we are entering the air signs. We had both Saturn and Jupiter moving into Aquarius. So it is very much that Aquarian age themes coming through. So we're gonna tune into this week up until the 8th, what will be coming up for you, what the planets are doing and how they're going to affect you. Now this month we do have Uranus and Taurus going stationary direct on the 1st. We also have Mars transiting out of Aries and into Taurus and that's occurring on the 7th. Venus is also transiting into Capricorn on the 8th and we also towards the end of the month will have a Mercury retrograde. We also this year have three squaring aspects Saturn is making which are quite major aspects of this year's astrology. The dates that that's occurring is going to be February the 17th June the 14th and December the 24th. Now we'll get deep into your astrology and tell you how this week up into the 8th is going to affect your zodiac sign. Hello my beautiful Geminis, let's get into the reading for your zodiac sign from the 1st to the 8th. Now do remember week by week I will provide you with your astrology individually and there will be other readings linked to the moon, twin flame path, chakras and more. So for the first week coming up for you, we are moving into a space where you may be meditating upon communication. Now because the moon is going to be in Leo, this can make a very interesting aspect for you individually. You may find that you're taking um, the bull by the horns. You may find you're being very stern with your communication. You may be thinking about your strengths, leadership, and the ways you can move the roles forward. And that's between the first and the third because we do have the moon transiting Leo. We also, on the first day of the month, have Mercury in Capricorn sextiling Neptune in Pisces. Now, this is a beautiful aspect where both your abilities to take accountability, working through details, um, bringing subjects to fruition by accountability and your thought processes. Just pay attention to um, your emotions that they're not overriding you because it still can be tense. We also, with Neptune in Pisces, it is linking to your career. So it's well and truly direct. We're having an opportunity to look at that career path and transform some of those areas. So really linking to your marriages, contracts, partnerships, you can find that these things are coming together. Again, it can be where you're having to look at documentation, um, you know, what's there for you to be had in a give and take uh, perspective. And we do have towards the end of the month, mercury retrograding so you do have approximately two weeks to get all of these details down packed um, in order to create that foundation to move forward for yourself and these subjects can be really playing out at the very beginning of the month now during this week you may find yourself looking over the entire structure of your life this will be within the element of your marriages contracts partnerships but the feasibility of all foundations uh, where is the stability in the critical points in your life when things go pear-shaped? Where is that ability to bounce back? This can link to taxation, wills, legacies, inheritance, shared resources. So all of that critical thinking, because you do have Mercury in the eighth, you will have the time to be able to work through those things. And it is aspecting it to tie up those loose ends to create that stability. So you're in, your intuition really effectively is going to aid you by tuning into where you have that control, what you can do with that domain, um, and really taking those important steps to move forward to create that. Now, last month may have been intense due to the fact that the eclipse landed in your seventh house placement. Now, really with both eclipses we had last month, it will still be playing out over the next six to 18 months. So still you can be feeling that energy and there can be transformations in those domains, both within your first house placement as you as a Gemini and with your marriages, contracts, partnerships. So pulling those things together 
tying those loose ends up, transforming those areas, be it you're still working in those areas, but you're moving things around and transforming them, or directly you left one way of being and you move towards another or another um, energy in your own personal life. If it was a previous separation, it might be the paperwork relating to that. It could be the, you know, the severing of that and moving towards another way of being. But for many of you, it's just changing that situation about. And it can be if you are in a relationship, you know, those shared resources maybe weren't there last month. Maybe there were small wins, so to speak. But trying to look at that and balancing yourself out as you move forward through 2021. On the third, emotions relating to home, your physical environment, you may be feeling that you need to get things in order, your emotions may be getting the better of you. If organisation hasn't been there, it could be that that situation and the way your routine is being run at the moment can get to a critical point. So it's really important moving into the beginning of the year to have those structures in place, those routines. Fourth house placement can be tricky. It can also be you looking at your routine and feeling that you're Cinderella, having to clean all the time, not having enough time to yourself and trying to really have that self mastery to manage those domains. Almost like the hangover effect from Christmas and New Year's in 2020, compiling all into one, needing to get that direct routine back on track to pull things in. So I really feel on the third and the fourth, these can be subjects that you can be looking at. Emotions can link to it. You may wish to go into hermit mode, but it's just to clear the deck and get everything in order. Now, if there was a date that you needed to be mindful of, and there was something that you were trying to tie up, be it taxation, paperwork, um, details really between the second leading up to the fourth will be a pivotal point. So it's very important to have anything relating to the eighth house placement with communication, with correcting things, getting that foundation right um, to be at that space by the fourth. That's because we're going to be having Mercury and Capricorn conjunct Pluto and Capricorn. So a sudden surprise um, really uh, coming through with the eighth house placement can be occurring, but it can also be a completion of that. Maybe the devil in the details and paperwork or, you know, really to um, have some information to be able to resolve something can come to a forefront or the dire need for a cycle or a situation to tie up to correct it. It also can be circumstances relating to your thought processes, um, of what you had been thinking on, trying to work out energetically, um, to do with a very complex problem or a situation. It can even be disputes relating to um, Mercury being very third house placement and trying to sum a lot of these things up to understand where everything is in its rightful place. But as to the Pluto energy, it's the integrity of the situation and um, this can be coming up for review at that day. Now on the 5th, we are having the moon transiting Libra and it's also occurring on the 6th. So on both days, it's really going to correlate with your creative pursuits. You may wish to indulge, you may wish to, you know, have a little bit more time that you can do something enjoyable, something of a, an emotional luxury, so to speak, uh, to get the balance back in your life. You may crave things more so. Uh, this can be um, very almost Venus attributes, you know, wanting to go out and have a good time, wanting to socialize, wanting to have that soca bath or, or doing something that really is, you know, touching those senses and, and bringing that playful energy into your life. Emotionally tune into why that is. You may actually find that some situations are potentially out of balance and by dealing with those, it will provide you with more opportunities to do that in 2021 especially come October, but majorly speaking, because your emotions will be linking to the fifth house, it can be something to do with your projects that you were trying to get off the ground and move forward. And really, you know, in the first two weeks of January, it's a beautiful time to be able to do that. On the sixth, we have Mercury and Capricorn conjunct Pluto again. So again, the devil in the detail, you know, taking that accountability, taking the bull by the horns and pulling those things in is really going to assist and working with like-minded individuals will benefit you, but trying to get those things done to get that movement, 
you will find networking is the key, especially with both Saturn and Jupiter in Aquarius, which does connect in to your ninth house. And ninth house can be marketing, advertising, learning, education. It can be long distance, but it can be very separate towards technology, communication, Skype, media, journalism, and things to that degree. Now Mars has really been hitting your 11th house placement for some time and especially during Aries and Chiron retrograde and Mars retrograde, it would have really been hitting the 11th house placement. So your hopes, dreams, aspirations, your connections, your friendship groups, there might have been tension points in that domain and leading up to the six, you may find that is amplified because as we proceed forward and even on the six, we have Mars reaching a point of the 29 degree, which is the critical degree point. Um, in healthy dynamics, it can be where we're culminating things and pouring our energy into dynamics to pull things together. Um, but it also can be a very pivotal tension point where aggression and anger can stem from these areas. So try and keep grounded in the first week of January, connecting to that 11th house, because it will transit out of that domain towards your 12th house. Um, and if this was relating to creative endeavors, you will find that by your spiritual mindset, your value systems, your belief systems, and really your toolbox of everything you've experienced is going to aid you, providing you utilize that 12th house effectively with Mars entering Taurus. And look, it will be there for mm, till March the 3rd, and then it will be entering Gemini. So if you do find a tension point, it's not going to be for the entire year, but it can give you a little bit of a background as to, you know, what your belief systems are surrounding those areas. Some of your creative ideas, getting psychic downloads, um, and keeping your ideas close to your chest. You may have had a betrayal previously, um, you know, where maybe one of your creative ideas was taken and, you know, really following your intuition with those things. Um, and, and coming to a point where, again, we're paying attention to, it, to our health in the first few weeks of January, getting grounded, getting organized so that we can move the ship forward. Now, especially this first week, please pay attention to your career sector, your work, anything you're working on, and know that there can be difficulties, especially moving towards the six. Um, try and be patient with this on this day. And if you do see kind of cracks in the boat of something that you need to shift around, don't take it as a no from universe because we do have the North Node there. Really, it can be where we're physically, spiritually stepping in our way and preventing ourselves and feeling that maybe we've got something all wrong. Um, looking at that and sitting with it for a bit, but I do feel creative solutions coming to the forefront, but difficulties potentially relating to, you know, the stress levels at work and communication crosswise. And it can feel a little bit for you personally, like Mercury retrograde, but getting that energy out and you will find within the next few days after this week, moving into next week's astrology, you can potentially with Mars entering Taurus, have different energies coming through, um, different realities and paradigms where it won't be as full as tension. Especially with your creative projects or even in your connections, you can find that this tension point can reduce. Now on the eighth, we have the moon transiting Scorpio. Now this is transiting through your sixth house, making sure that you have all your work up to date, making sure that, you know, you have done everything effectively. Now sixth house placement can be unique. Our emotions can be relating to because it's moon. And this can be um, troubles with female energies. It can be troubles with betrayals because it's moon energy. Our feelings, our emotions, our subconscious mind. Uh, relating to the sixth house, which is work, your work environment, your habits, your health routine, um, your working environment. So however that's playing out for you, emotions relating to that subject matter can be affecting you. Now it can be if you're working from home, again, subjects relating to that, do you have everything in order? Um, are people potentially accepting healthy boundaries that when you clock on, you clock on, when you clock off, you clock off? Uh, again, sometimes with the sixth house, it can be the place of our own undoing where the healthy boundaries are required. Uh, and it can also, uh, it can be tension, but at the same time, you develop a skill through that house. So it's incredibly essential to move through that. With this 
I do feel you can be thinking about or an emotional trigger can come up relating to it. But as Venus enters Capricorn again, you can be looking at what the give and take is. So if you're in a situation, be it a relationship, a marriage, a contract, a partnership, Venus is asking you to look at the bigger picture with moving forward. How will that resonate with you with Venus in Capricorn in your eighth house? Is there give and take? Is it mutual? Um, where is the routine? Is it benefiting you? Mercury also enters Aquarius on this day. Now there can be a lot of communication, maybe wanting to go on a holiday, maybe feeling you need a break. Um, and again, it can be a lot of spiritual aspects that you potentially could be thinking on. Value systems, thought processes, conversations that occurred. And again, with the ninth house, it does link to education. So for some of you, this can connect to your education or children's education. It also can be to do with what's going on in the globe or from a very separate level, your marketing, your advertising, the launching of situations, tuning into it, communicating it. Um, Mercury in Aquarius is great for networking. So even though you have Mars previously in the 11th house, you will tend to find that your connections will be more conducive and you can attract friends from the past. You also can attract people more like-minded and be seeing the difference. Now, a lot of you guys may be feeling in the first week that with Mercury in Aquarius squaring Mars and Taurus, that, you know, some of your value systems, some of the things that you're needing to do, maybe your thought process and belief systems connected to finances, connected to, um, you know, how you can move the ship forward, uh, where the sharing is, um, what, what you want to create, keeping it close to your chest, but there can be some sense of difficulty. And again, even though, as I mentioned, sometimes we can feel these doors are closed, there's more work to be done, you feel like it's never gonna end. This can be a point on the eighth where there can be difficulties, but it's not saying no. And I do feel pretty much on this day, having Venus and Capricorn, if you network and you go back to that element of, you know, your natural resources, what you have at your disposition. So what do I mean about that? Looking at the Capricorn energy is eighth house. What can you depend on? Um, also, what needs to change? It will be trining Mars and Taurus. So some sense of belief system or launching of something, it will be beneficial at this point. It's almost uh, like you're waiting to strike while the iron's hot. And I do feel by this aspect occurring on the 8th, it can benefit you. But make sure that you're trusting the process, trust your instincts, but also look at the aspect that because we do have the moon transiting Scorpio and it does link to your sixth house, uh, make sure that the person, what they're selling you or what they're um, uh, trying to say to you, that it's actually in fine print. And I don't know why I'm picking that, but sixth house can be quite testing where we compassionately understand it's like a mistake was happened in the past, so therefore it won't happen again. Sometimes it can. So we do need to be cautious as to how we're actually tuning into the circumstances playing out with our life and what we're going to do to effectively protect ourselves, but have that give and take. So again, with, with the emotions coming up with the moon in Scorpio, you may want to connect in with people, but you also may not trust situations on this date. So just try and move away from this date. And as it proceeds forward, we'll check in next week. Okay, must knows for you guys, Gemini. Now you may find as the moon transit, you may be getting third eye activations. Now this can be headaches, tension, um, tuning into things. If you need to, you can do third eye clearing Food groups linking to that, obviously from an astrological point of view, not a let's seek a professional point of view. Um, so very much the third eye can be coming up. So headaches, tension. Now thought processes, it's very healthy to actually document some of these things down. Also having time to meditate upon what you're feeling and why you're feeling it, tapping into that. You're also going to be having, by the time we do move between the third and the fourth, you may be having again, throat chakra activation. So pay attention to communication, pay attention to, are you communicating from a place of pain and emotion, or are you communicating effectively? Because emotions can be coming up and tension linking to feminine energies can be coming up at this point. 
Now, as we move towards the fifth and the sixth, we're having heart chakra activation. So, you know, keeping healthy, eating the food groups relating to the heart chakra. It can be using gems, guided meditation, heart clearing, um, careful with the caffeine on this day, especially for your zodiac sign. And most definitely with the axis of you being a Gemini and the nodes being in both Gemini and Sagittarius for the next two and a half years, having the sacral chakra and the throat chakra gems on you can actually help you clear them. Uh, do have time away from them, but if you are feeling triggered, it's really good to actually balance those areas out. They're really being purged, transformed, um, empowered, so to speak. And you're gonna find that through that access to the first and the seventh house placement, a lot of your belief systems that you thought you had to be inside of these contracts, connections, partnerships, are very polar opposite to what it actually is. So there can be a lot of codependency being purged. There can be a lot of liberation that occurs. It can be frightening at times, but you will go through that soul process of transformation. You'll feel incredibly different after the fact. The second part, get your paperwork done. Go over any contracts, especially with the eighth house placement. It can be inheritances, wills, paperwork, um, plumbing and subjects to do with that can also come up because it does relate to Pluto. So, you know, really looking over contracts if you're hiring anyone, making sure, even though it's not Mercury retrograde, it's document oriented subjects. Now, on the third and the fourth, you can potentially be very balanced if you're getting grounded and you're getting everything in order. And it is a good day, probably even prior to the beginning of the year doing that. So it takes the tension point off the fourth house. Getting organized is going to help the flow on effect moving through 2021, especially with our astrology. And it's, it's good astrology this year. It, it just can be very testing with certain things because we already are tied moving into January, 2021 due to the previous year's astrology. Now, past tent connections, and that can be creative pursuits, um, your friendship groups, they can be changing. There still can be tension points there. There can be a lot of communication relating to where you stand, misunderstandings, things to that degree, especially with siblings, because we did have the eclipse in Sagittarius. So do know that by the end of this week, the tension point can be removed and alleviated from that point if it's been very difficult with some of your creative pursuits as well as your friendship groups and your socialization. Uh, but be patient with those areas temporarily. It can be amplified and you everyone may want a piece of the pie of Gemini this month um, at the beginning stage, but just try and be patient with it. As it transfers over to Taurus, it will take the tension point off. And it, it will remain in Taurus, as I mentioned, till March 3rd and then it moves into Gemini which is your first house so you may feel very energetic around that time and really be looking at what you're wanting and you you just point blank so you have more energy being that it is your first house for all your important updates, please click the bell. Anything important I need to come to you that I feel directly is urgent relating to your zodiac, the trans or any updates linking to the Schumann Resonance, our chakra, twin flame path, I do come live. You can ask super chat questions during the sessions. So if you haven't subbed, click the bell and I'll touch base with you soon. Gemini, please take care. I will see you next week for all the important up-to-date information that will help you week by week make it through 2021. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. I will see you during the week live at Yildiz Readings 5D. If you're needing a booking, the link is directly below. Please tell me how this video resonates with you. I'll talk to you soon. Take care, beautifuls. See you on the other side.